Welcome, ladies, to another episode of the Feel Amazing Naked podcast. I'm so excited today to have Dr. Morgan Francis on the show. I stumbled upon um, your Instagram after a friend introduced um, you to me, and I'm so grateful she did because you have really powerful infographics, first off, that I love sharing as well. Um, but I'm excited to have a, an in-depth conversation. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Awesome. Um, so I would love to know just a little bit of background um, about how you got to where you are now in career and personal life. So share us all the details. Sure. Well, I am originally from Cleveland, Ohio, and I moved out to Arizona to pursue my doctorate in clinical psychology. And then I started working at a, a group private practice here in Scottsdale, where we specialized in an in intensive outpatient program. And so I primarily was working with sexual health and um, serving uh, adult males. And then what I noticed is that there was a lot of comorbidity between sex and food. Um, and with that, then my expansion went into really looking at body image and the specific niche of body image because you don't have to meet the criteria of having an eating disorder to then have a negative body image. So many of us are walking around with insecurity about the way that we look, our weight, and our shape. Um, and so this impacts many areas of our lives. So then I started to um, build my practice and opened up my own private practice here in Scottsdale um, called Scottsdale Premier Counseling. And I'm a mother of three. I have um, an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, a four-year-old. So, you know, it's just learning how to navigate being a business owner, a licensed psychologist, and also a mother to help serve those in the community. Yeah, it's all, it's juggling a lot of hats, especially right now. Um, tell me more about the aha moment of when you're like, I'm really passionate about doing work around body image. You mentioned you saw some tendencies that are some similarities, but I'm wondering, was there like a, a catalyst that was like, absolutely, this is the work I'm meant to be doing? Yeah, it just felt easy. And I don't mean it is easy to work through a person's body image, but it felt very organic and natural and authentic. So, I mean, I could talk about body image all day. And I think for me personally, where, when there was an aha moment is um, post my own recovery with my eating disorder that I had um, roughly in my teenage and 20 uh, years, um, not 20 years old, but in my 20s, I should say. Um, I came across an article, um, and I wish I knew who wrote it because I would love to send her a letter and thanking her, but mm. she really talked about how it's not, we don't have to lose weight in order to start embracing who we are. In fact, it's learning to appreciate your body in this moment. And I thought, what? Like, no way. Like, I can be happy with my body when... I fit into X size pants or when the scale is this number. I was always searching. I was always um, working towards a number. And when she gave me that permission to accept my body the way that it was in that moment, it was just this switch in how I was living my life. Because I often explore with my patients, who would you be without the thought, I need to lose weight? And many of them don't know because their whole life's goal has been focused on weight loss, that they have stopped living and they've put their career, they've put parenting or becoming a mother, or they don't get into the photos or they don't shop at certain stores or they don't get on the beach or they don't step on stage because they think, well, I'm not ready to because I don't look like her, whoever her is, right? Um, or I don't look how I used to look. And so we really um, have a hardship and resistance around that our body shape and size is going to change because it's not shown to us on social media and in, in media at all. We typically see women's stomachs being either flat or pregnant. There's no in between. And so because we don't see images, we then think to ourselves, well, then my body's not acceptable or there's must be something wrong with my body if I'm not seeing what my body looks like through diversity, through ableism, through whatever it may be on social media. So I highly recommend to people, you know, and I speak about this often, it's not just unfollowing the counts that make you feel insecure. 
It's following accounts of body types that actually look like yours or expanding your diversity of body types on your social media. So that I'm not looking at women that look like me. I'm looking at women that look nothing like me and look diverse in all types of body shapes and sizes and ableism. And I think that that's significantly important when expanding our own relationship with our body. I love that you said that. I just want to share this with you. So you have a context for my journey too, is, you know, I went on a weight loss journey after having kids. I gained, you know, a lot of weight through that was always kind of just like, you know, I, I, I can't say I was wildly preoccupied with food, but I did, you know, my first diet was with my mom when I was, you know, 14 ish doing Weight Watchers, but I definitely was living the belief that if I just have six pack a six, six pack abs, my entire world will finally like click. Right. And I didn't have a coach to tell me, I mean, I had to figure that out myself through digesting podcasts, through like my own journaling work. And eventually I hired someone for what I thought was business coaching. But in reality, what I needed was just a core belief shift that, um, it's not about having the six pack or making this se- building the seven figure business or, um, w- whatever insert those like aspirations that we desire that, um, the true shift needed to happen inside of gaining being present, but also finding out like why I wasn't in alignment with happiness and what I thought I would have that I didn't already have with those six pack abs. And so when you said that, I just really appreciate the the vocabulary that you use so powerfully because I think it's part of um, understanding that to love where you eventually are, you have to understand what's missing, right? Or, or what that focal point is of doing that inner work in, in through the journey. Absolutely. So I, I, I want to touch on something you mentioned um, because I hear this a lot from clients is I look at, you know, something to the effect of, I look at my old self or I had a Facebook memory pop up and it, you know, when I, in 2012 and I was so skinny and I look so good and I just want to be back to that person, right? That woman. So I would love to know, um, you know, what are, what are your thoughts or what is your, um, suggestion or advice for someone who keeps getting stuck in if I only could go back to my old self? So there's two main points when people bring this topic up. And one is if you were to ask yourself in that younger photo, if you were happy with your body size, I would imagine you would have said no, right? So then fast forward five, 10 years later, you look back at that body size and you're like, oh, I wish I had that shape. And that just shows evidence of how distorted our body image lens is, right? Because at the time that photo was taken, you weren't feeling secure in your body. And so we, that just supports the idea that it's all about the perception, right? It's all about your lens that you're holding. The other piece is, yes, it's going to be important for you to start to grieve the body you used to have. And we talk about body grief, right? So my body is not going to look the way that it looked when I was 20 years old, and it's not meant to. So wrapping our minds around that our bodies are supposed to change in its, you know, appearance is part of aging, is part of becoming an adult, is part of growth, is part of living, right? My skin doesn't look like it used to when I was 20 years old. My hair doesn't have the same texture and maybe fullness that it had when I was 20 years old. My nails don't, that's just life. And so we really need to start to embrace, um, you know, the grief around our bodies changing. And we don't talk about body grief. We expect that we should remain in this appearance and pre- preservation of youth and um, like, uh, you know, not changing. And that's really unrealistic and a horrible myth that I try to really squash with my patients. It's so powerful. It's like you were meant to be in my life today because I just got back from the beach last week and, you know, I was out for, I love running on the beach. It's like such an amazing feeling. And I actually felt um, as I was running, you know, and seeing kind of the value, uh, what came up for me was just the value as society we have on youth. And, you know, as we start to age, I'm almost 40, um, and starting to see how different 
people around me embrace it or push it away. And the pressure though, I think there is pressure um, and that you have to work through on your own to preserve that youth in a lot of ways. And it's really asking yourself like, who do I want to be as I age? And that's a really hard push pull that I feel like I'm personally navigating right now and had those discussions with because youth is so, um, you know, being young is put on this pedestal and we feel to age is, um, uh, there is no grace or there is no wisdom or no beauty in it. So yes, we're really how I conceptualize it. And I love the point that you're making is our attachment to our youth, right? And how much do we identify that with our self-concept, who, how we see ourselves or who we are, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's a, if, there, if a woman is very attached to her youth because most of her life, she's been getting compliments about her appearance, it's going to be really hard for her to grieve her body and her aging. Right. And so we see that being compensated through plastic surgery, fillers, Botox, whatever have you. And again, for the record, I'm not against anyone having, you know, cosmetic enhancements or what they need to do, because at the end of the day, it's your body. Mm -hmm. It's your body, your right. You choose what you want to do with your body. But let's investigate what's underneath these decisions before you're spending all this time and money um, investing in the preservation of a youth because, you know, mother nature, she wins. Yeah, she does every, every time. single time, <laughs> every time she's going to win. So I think it's just really important and, um, valuing the, like you just talked about, like running on the beach makes you feel so connected, right. And strong. I'm assuming you didn't use those words, but that's my word for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and freeing, right. And, and that's what you love about running on the beach. And so that's exactly the point. It's, it's appreciating what our bodies do for us rather than how it looks as it's running. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, what also, you know, kind of comes up is um, when I ask my clients to uh, a really helpful piece is if you look back at that 20 year old self is, do you really like, want to go back to that phase of life. Cause I think about my, let's say 30 year old self, 25 year old self, like I didn't have my children then. Like I wasn't like 10 years into a, a beautiful marriage. I didn't have some of the friendships. And so I think important piece too, is also looking away from body and looking at like the richness of your life currently versus then. And not to say my twenties weren't a great time too. They were just different, but I know for me, my little two little nuggets were not in the picture in my twenties. And that to me has given me like so much more purpose in life. Yeah. And I, I love the idea of broadening the scope, right? Which is really what you're talking about. Um, because I also, I agree with you. I look back to my twenties and I mean, I don't wish for that body back, even though I was in a thinner size body, way thinner than I am now. I don't wish for that body back. I wish for that time back. Mm -hmm. I think that's the distinction. I wish for the time back because at that time in my life, I was traveling. I had way less, you know, uh, responsibilities being a parent and obviously, you know, owning a home and being a business owner. I mean, right. You're, you know, the, your, your responsibilities just shift and they change because you're entering a, a different season of your life. But I don't, I don't wish for that body back that was, that I was destroying myself. I was destroying my health. I was completely insecure, starving, binging, purging, over-exercising, um, lost in, you know, all the insecurity. I mean, all the things, right. That we, that women tend to struggle with, um, was definitely magnified for me during those, those years in that body. So no, I don't wish for that body back, even though it was thinner. I wish for that time back so I could go back to that young girl and, and give her a big hug and let her know she's going to be okay. Yeah, so true. So let's then have the hard conversation about, um, you know, what, what I, I've had discussions with women too, and I think this is really important is, yes, there is this element of accepting and looking at body image um, and, and loving, I forget, what, um, what your actual course um, is titled, You Deserve to Love Your Body Without Having to Lose Weight. And I want you to share more about that shortly. Um, but talk to me more about the woman that is uncomfortable in her body. And, and it's not about even a look necessarily. It's about like freedom of movement. It's about security and self. It's about, let's say, intimacy. It's about being able to get on the floor and play with their children or dive into waves. You know, what is the feedback you would give to a woman that says, okay, I get it, but like, I can't see past the discomfort I'm feeling in myself to even start to have some sort of semblance of loving my body. Sure. And it's, um, the first and foremost, what I always do, no matter what a person's experience is with their body is to validate 
right? To honor where they are in their journey with their body. And because they make sense, it might be uncomfortable for them to be sitting on the floor. It might be difficult for them to tie their shoes. It may be labor intensive for them to go walking more than 30 minutes. Um, and so, yeah, it's about validating that and recognizing, again, if we've brought in the idea of health and instead of limiting it to losing weight equals healthy, right? Making, you know, there's this synonymous like of, of health equals thinness. And that's not true because if I just, you know, highlighted the fact that I was in a thinner body, but I was very unhealthy when I was in a thinner body. So I like the concept of body neutrality. Body neutrality is I'm human. I have human arms, right? I have human legs and they help me do human things like walk and stand and sit and um, move and dance or garden or have sex or eat ice cream, you know, whatever it may be. And really just shifting the focus off of how it appears and into body appreciation and trust. Learning to appreciate your body for what it's doing for you, how it heals a bruise, how it keeps you alive and how it keeps going despite all the diets that you've been on and all the restriction and the binging and the overeating or whatever's going on in your life. It's, it doesn't, it's never abandoned you, right? Of all the people, of all the things that have left you or rejected you, your body hasn't. Um, so there's, it's, it's about understanding and making a deeper connection with your body then, you know, what you're looking at it right then in the moment of all things you cannot do and moving towards the gratitude of what your body's able to, to do. Yeah. And, um, I think that, um, that piece is, I mean, just piggybacking off the aging piece too, is that that's what we have as we age, that appreciation for that too becomes more ever, it just becomes so much more obvious. And, um, I think sometimes we definitely, uh, take that for granted. Even as I look at my children playing too, is like trying to have that vocabulary with them. And, uh, I know because we've had a little bit of dialogue too surrounding our kids because so much of, um, who we are and who we are being in front of our children when it comes to body image is exactly what they are going to accept as a truth or accept as what is correct as they age. So can you speak a little bit towards the being part as a parent and maybe what your like guiding principles or vocabulary you're using in your house with regard to body image? I don't know if you have daughters, sons, I don't know, really think it matters, but just kind of curious what that dynamic is. Yeah. So, you know, that's a really big question I get asked um, is how do I make sure my daughter doesn't hate her body? Right. I get asked that all the time. And, and really what the parent is asking me here is how do I make sure my, my daughter doesn't hate her body the way I've hated mine? Yeah. So um, and it starts with you, right? It starts with the parents because children learn through social modeling. So monkey see, monkey do. So you, I could tell, I have an eight-year-old daughter. So I could tell my daughter until she's, you know, blue in the face, how beautiful, how cute, how amazing she is. But if I'm standing in the mirror and I'm grimacing or if I'm pinching my stomach or if I'm eating only certain foods because mommy's on a diet and mommy can't eat pasta tonight, mommy can't partake um, in the activities because I don't like the way that I look in my swimsuit, right? She's going to see how I judge my body. And that's very confusing for a child because if I'm telling her that she's beautiful, but I don't feel beautiful. And she thinks I'm beautiful because that's what children do. They always think that we're amazing because we're their mothers and fathers. If you know any mm -hmm. men are listening to this podcast, um, then it sends like a very confusing message for the child. So I am very, very aware of how I speak or don't speak about my body shape and size. It's it's just not something I talk about. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, I'm way well, you know, ad advanced, I would say, in the body image department. So it's easy for me not to even think about it, let alone talk about it. But I also give myself compliments. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the other piece too. It's not just not talking about your body. It's also praising your body, affirming your body, um, appreciating your body um, in a way that your children can hear. You know, so, you know, if I'm moving my body, if I'm working out, which I love to do, um, because it helps my stress level, not from a weight loss perspective. Um, and I love lifting weights. It's not in my comfort zone. I don't like to lift weights, but I do it because if I can lift a weight 
that makes me feel capable and strong. And I'm like, if I can do this in my garage, I'm sure yeah. I can dig out there in the real world, right? Yeah. So it's using that microcosm and, and applying it to the macrocosm of your world. And that's what I want my children to see, right? I want my children to see me struggle, not in the negative way, but struggle to, you know, a mommy's getting strong today. I'm going to go outside and lift some weights. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I want to get strong too. Or mommy's working on her flexibility. Do you want to help me like push my back so I can reach my toes? And so my daughter and I will just, you know, work on our movement together. But it's not about like, I mean, my son asked me the other day if I was pregnant. Because <laughs> I was sitting down and my stomach's hanging out. And I'm like, no, buddy, mommy's not pregnant. And, you know, again, bless his heart, he doesn't know. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's not something I think as a negative. I'm just, no, I mean, the way I was sitting, my stomach was out and okay, you know, whatever. It, I love my stomach. It's been through so much. It's had three babies, been, survived an eating disorder. My stomach's amazing. Yeah. It, it's very humanizing to offer that too. I, I think that we sometimes, you know, um, have interactions with people like yourself who, um, you know, have done the work and are, you know, educated, but you still face the same realities and struggles that we do. And that makes us more alike than different. And then I think that brings a level of deeper um, empathy to the, to the work that you do. And I always say, you know, like, it's one thing if I could stand here and, you know, I personally believe if I would have been delivering the same content I was, I am now as a 24 year old versus now in my, you know, thirties, I could, I, I'm a far greater coach. And, um, I, because I have such empathy because I've been there, I've struggled, I've been through the mud, right. And I've, I'm parenting. And so I know those same struggles that the women I get to, you know, have the honor to work with are struggling with is because I, I've been there too. And that empathy you can bring, I think is just next, you know, offers a next level. Thank you. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, and here's the thing. I mean, I can do as much as I can in my home, but I know my daughter and my boys, I have two, a daughter and two boys are going to be surrounded by messages outside of our home. And there's nothing I can do to control that. So as a parent, I think it's our job to equip our children with the tools to handle adversity, to handle challenges, to handle the, the, the things that keep us up at night and, and kind of question who we are and, 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 uh, and our own identity. And if I can help my children have the coping tools to be able to navigate through life, that's the best thing I can ask for. Because, you know, they're, they're human. They're going to, you know, my daughter used the word thin. Like she said something about like, Oh, it's because I'm thin. And I was like, oh, like, we don't use that word in this home. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, no, baby girl, it's because your body's amazing. Your body provides you to do amazing things and you're strong and you're, you know, you're, you have great movement and power, you know, and again, like I've never used that word, but she's going to be exposed to terminology that's outside of my control. So it's about, you know, helping them have the language and be able to cope with any type of things that they get called, um, teased by um, you know, criticism because th that's life and, and that's how we grow. Yeah. My daughter had a birthday recently and she had a few friends over and, you know, I love just like observing. I'm trying to not be a helicopter, but just, they were watercoloring and I was just kind of listening and it was interesting. The dialogue that came out, the discussion was, um, around food. I was my daughter's favorite meal is spaghetti. So we were doing like a pasta bar with bread and salad and, you know, she had helped prep and, um, the discussion definitely was surrounding, Oh, you know, we're not able to have pasta in our home. And so I thought it was such an amazing, um, aha moment for me of I'm going to do what I can in the home, right? Talk about the same things. It's not fat or thin, it's power, it's peace, right? I talk a lot about like working out brings like so much stillness and peace to my brain. Um, but after all, like we're sending them out into the real world and we're not just, it's not even related to body image and food. There's just so much that we have to really pay attention to in our home with regard to vocabulary. And then they are going to be exposed out there. And we just hope that they've got like the, you know, the foundation and the layers ready for them to handle it. Exactly. And that's a beautiful example, right? I mean, that's, that's what we can ask for and hope for with our children. Um, so I would love for you to share a little bit more about your work. I know you have a practice, but you also, um, have an online course or courses. Um, I would love for you to share more about how the listeners can connect with you. Your Instagram is amazing. So if you wouldn't mind just walking us through all that, that would be so fantastic. Absolutely. So yes, I have a prior practice here in Scottsdale. Um, I conduct individual couples and family therapy with minors and adults. 
Um, and then I also have my Instagram account, which has tons of information about mental health and body image. I also offer, um, provide free text messaging service. So basically, um, it's called Mindful Messages, and you can text the number 202-759-6205. It's just like you were texting a friend, and then it automatically puts you into the text messaging service, and then two to three times a week, you will get text messages from me that are words of wisdom, um, encouragement, uh, empowerment, all around mental health and, and, and living. It's not specific to just body image. It's, it's you know, just knowing that you're not alone. Um, I had a friend that passed away um, several months ago from suicide. And I often thought to myself, um, you know, I wonder if he would have gotten something, like knowing that he wasn't alone in his um, depression and anxiety, maybe this could have bought him time. I don't know if it would have saved his life, but maybe it would have bought him some time. And so that's really what the, the, the mindful messages were all about. It's, it's connecting and knowing that we're not alone. And actually I launched them before COVID hit. Um, and once COVID hit, like they just blew up and I've had so many people, even my husband came home one day and he's like, was that for me? Did you write that one specifically for me? And I was like, no, babe, like they're for everybody. You just know that you're not alone. Like we're all feeling this right now. He's like, man, these are so good. Like I actually really like getting them because it just, it takes you out of the autopilot of life and just reminds you, um, to be in your awareness. Um, so that's free. So anyone can sign up for that. And then, um, I also have the two, uh, courses, they're online courses. One is, um, loving yourself through loss, which is helping a person cope with, um, any of the grief or bereavement they're going through. And then also, um, the bye bye body blame, how to love yourself without having to lose weight. Um, and that's really a, an overview of body image. I'm looking at the four steps I recommend to start healing your relationship with your body. Um, and then today, um, I just launched a, a live webinar. So I'm going to be going um, on uh, September, Saturday, September 26th, I believe the day is. Um, at 9 a.m., I'm going to be doing a live webinar on intuitive eating, so how to stop dieting and start living. So for anyone who's interested in learning intuitive eating, whether you are someone who already knows it and wants to, as a you know, provider, a coach, a trainer, a licensed therapist who wants to help their clients, or for anyone who's wanting this for themselves, this is a, a webinar um, where I'm going to be doing a 90-minute presentation and a QA. and a um, And then you'll have a step-by-step -step bonus guide to walk you through all the things you need to know to, about intuitive eating so you can start implementing it today. Amazing. Um, so it sounds like you have lots going on, but I'm curious, um, what's on the like horizon for 2021? A lot of just rinse and repeat, which is um, hands full, but what are your like big dreams and visions for 2021? Well, it kind of came true a little bit. So in 2020, um, I wanted to hit national TV um, with my message. And so I had three offers from different programs. Um, but then when COVID hit and all the things that have happened in the world, um, it didn't work out exactly. But then um, the BBC News had contacted me um, and so I just did a segment for them um, on body neutrality, which what went live on their um, their website, which was pretty special to be amazing. <laughs> be yes. international. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Carrie Ann Anadaba, um, the judge from Dancing with the Stars. Um, I just was interviewed for a blog post on her website as well. Um, so that was pretty special. So really for 2021, um, it's creating, I, I have so many people that reach out to me that don't live in Arizona that want to work with me. And I can't because of the licensing, uh, you know, state licensing board. So I'm putting together a, a really big segment of courses for them to really have all the information that I teach my clients um, that will take them through exactly what they need to know um, to help them heal their relationship with their body image. Um, and obviously improve their overall quality of life with their mental health. So that's on the horizon for 2021. But, you know, it's interesting. I was just talking to another friend of mine who's an entrepreneur and she was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And I'm like, yes, it's exciting. But I really, um, you know, what really fills my cup is like those intimate moments that I have like with a client or the intimate moments I'm even having with you right now, talking with you, or, you know, being with my children and seeing them, like my daughter's never dribbled a basketball in her life. And I was like, would you want to try off with a basketball team? She's like, sure. 
And it's that concept that we think we have to be like ready to do something and ready is such a liar and seeing her just go for it and just have fun out in the basketball court, not knowing at all what she's doing. I think that just gave me that confidence again to remind myself, like, it's okay to, to not like, you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and just the, like, for me, my, um, my confidence, my self-esteem, my self-worth comes from those intimate moments. It's getting the feedback from the person who takes my course and says, this was life-changing for me. And I, I'm, I'm a better person for doing this course. Like that's what I love. So anything that I can do to help women come back home to themselves, like I'm like, I've come back home to me is where I will continue to put my effort into. Mm. Well, I am so grateful to be around a like-minded woman because the the last thought you ended with was why I feel like I was put here to do the same, you know, similar work in many ways of, um, I love that you, there's a lot of women who are on that entrepreneur kind of journey to that are listening. So I think there's like a readiness too of we wait and we wait and we wait kind of looking on the outskirts, like a voyeur of all the action happening because we tell ourselves the story that it has to look a certain way before we take right. messy action. And so it's a great way to end and just say, go do go. the thing. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for the time and space to be with us today. And I know this is going to speak right to the hearts of all the ladies listening. So we're grateful for you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely.